Well, hey, physics folks. Doc, or welcome to Doc Onco Physics. Keith Onco here. Today, we want to look at is uh, yet another one of Newton's laws problems. And today, we've got is we've got two buckets uh, hanging by ropes, all right? And we'll assume this one here is connected to a tree branch or something, all right? So they're connected. Um, and we're going to give these buckets a mass of, uh, say, two kilograms each. All right, so two kilograms for each one of the buckets, and there's probably some water in there or something. And we would like to know what the tensions are in the ropes that are connecting the buckets. And because these are not the same ropes, all right, there's probably going to be two different tensions. And so we're going to call this one T1 up here, and we'll call this one T2 down here. And since the top rope is connected to a branch or something, uh, we're assuming also that the system is not accelerating, so our acceleration is, of our system is going to be zero. Okay, so that's, that's meaningful. All right, so we have no x direction forces for either one of the buckets. But what we should do or need to do first is let's take a look at the forces on each one of the buckets. I'm going to call this bucket here M1, and we'll call this one M2. So let's look at the forces on M1 first. Well, we have a rope attached to M1 on the top, and that's always going to be pulling. Ropes only pull, right? So it's going to be pulling in that direction. So that's the T1, the T1 force, if you will. All right? We have another rope attached to the bottom of bucket M1, all right? And again, ropes only pull. All right, so that's going to be going in that direction, and that's M2, I'm sorry, that's T2, okay? Uh, what other forces do we have on M1? Well, we have the gravity of the bucket itself, all right? So force due to gravity, and we'll call that 1, which is equal to M1 times G. Uh, do we have any other forces? Mm, I think that we've taken care of all the forces on, on uh, bucket M1. So let's look at bucket M2 now. Well, bucket M2 is connected by a rope, right? And ropes only pull. So that's going to be pulling in the upward direction. It's still the same T2, right? It's still the same force or the same tension in that rope because it's the same rope. But it now, now it's going to be pulling up with respect to bucket M2. Uh, we have gravity on bucket M2. So F G2 will equal M2 times G. And that appears to be all of the forces that we have in the y direction on either one of the buckets. And again, we only have forces in the y direction. The acceleration, as I mentioned, is zero, okay? So because it's just hanging from a tree branch or something. And so now let's write some equations. So the sum of the forces in the y direction for, for bucket M1 is going to be what? Well, we have a positive T1, right? Because it's pulling in the upward direction. We have a minus T2, right? Because that's pointing in the downward direction. And we have also the force due to gravity on bucket M1, and that's also going to be pulling in the downward direction. So that's going to be minus M1 times G, all right? And what's all this going to equal? Well, since our acceleration is zero, all right? M1 times 0 is simply going to be 0, okay? Now let's look at the forces in the y direction for bucket M2. What do we got? Well, again, we have an upward force, right? The tension in the rope on bucket M2, it's going to be positive this time. So it's going to be a positive T2. And that's going to, uh, and that's the only thing going in the upward direction. In the downward direction, we have no rope in the downward direction. We only have gravity. So that's going to be minus m2 times g. And that's also going to equal 0. OK, so uh, now we've written our two equations. So what can we do? Well, we know what m1 is. We know what m2 is. And we know what g is. All right, so we can actually solve for t2 all right, in terms of m2 and g. All right, so t2 is going to equal m2, which is 2 kilograms, times 9.8 meters per second squared, all right? And that happens to be 
19.6 newtons. Okay, so T2 is 19.6 newtons. All I did was I took uh, M2G here, negative M2G, and I brought it over to the other side and made it positive. And so T2 is 19.6 newtons. So now we know that. So we've solved for one of the tensions. Now what I can do is I can just take and substitute into the first equation, right? And that gives me T1 minus 19.6 newtons, all right? Because T2 is T2 is 19.6 newtons, but it's got a minus sign right there, all right? Minus M1 times G. Well, M1 is two kilograms. G is 9.8 meters per second squared. And again, we've already taken care of the negative sign here, right? So we don't have to stick another negative in for the 9.8 there. And that equals zero. All right, so now what I've got is T1 minus 19.6 newtons minus another 19.6 newtons equals zero. And when I do this little bit of math here, I find that T1 is equal to uh, 39. 2 newtons. Okay, and I've now solved for both T1 and T2 by simply looking again at each one of the objects independently, right? Finding all the forces on each object, right? Object 1, object 2, writing an equation for each object, right? And then using the equations and solving them simultaneously or it's just substituting in like we just did uh, did now. Well, I hope that helps. And have a great day.